Will everyone receive the same reward? Hi, welcome to Little Lessons, another special Burma edition. On our previous little lesson, we were talking about what happens when you die. And I emphasize the fact that your spirit evacuates your body and maybe angels transport you to the throne of God. Sooner or later, and it doesn't really make any difference, does it, in eternity, sooner or later, we all have to stand before God and give an account. And I emphasized last time that we'll be judged by our works on two levels. One level is to determine whether or not we have truly believed in Jesus, because people who are born again, uh, they're changed, they're transformed, and the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of them and begins to clean them up. Now, we have to cooperate. God doesn't take away our free will, but he goes right to work on some really grievous stuff. And that's why Paul said, don't be deceived, brethren, fornicators, adulterers, you know, the effeminate, uh, the covetous. Um, you know, swindlers and thieves and so forth, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. People that really believe in Jesus, you know, stop those uh, grievous sins and they're transformed. The Holy Spirit helps them in all this and the Holy Spirit helps us along the whole pathway as we strive to enter by the narrow gate. So we're judged on one level by our works to determine whether or not we really believe in Jesus or not. And then secondly, we're judged by our works to determine whether or not um, or what kind of uh, rewards we receive or miss out on receiving. It's very clear in Scripture that in the reign of Christ, not everyone's going to be in the same position in his government. Jesus talked about, you know, one guy being real faithful and I'll put you in charge of ten cities. Another guy being, you know, pretty faithful and being in charge of five cities. Okay, so that's a little differentiation there in our positions during the reign of Christ. And, and then, of course, there are other rewards that uh, are alluded to in Scripture. We don't always know exactly what those are. Now, I want to talk about these rewards a little bit and that judgment a little bit, the judgment of our works as believers in Christ. And I, there's a really cool scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where Paul's talking about himself and Apollos, a, a guy who was a teacher who after Paul laid the foundation there establishing the church in Corinth, Apollos came in and was doing some teaching. And the Corinthians were dividing up as to who their favorite teacher was. And some were saying, I'm of Paul. Some were saying, I'm of Apollos. And so, so Paul says, well, hey, all we are is just servants of Jesus Christ. And we're each going to receive, now listen closely, our own reward according to our own labor. And that's where I'm going to break into 1 Corinthians chapter 3 right now. Um, Paul, Paul said, uh, in verse number six, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers and you are God's field, God's building. And now he builds on this building analogy. According to the grace of God, which is given to me like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. That's referring to Apollos, the teacher. But each man must be careful how he builds on it, for no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If any man builds on the foundation with, and now he lists six different materials that you could build with, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. So you, in those six building materials, you notice that three could be burned up, wood, hay, and stubble, and three were not so easy to burn, gold, silver, and precious stones, all right? Um, you know, the gold, silver, and precious stones represent building with... with uh, you know, God's materials, and the wood, hay, and stubble represent building with something other than God's materials, which could only be man's materials. And Paul said, one day, all of those works are going to go through the fire, and it will test the quality. It may not be so obvious right now who's building with gold and silver and precious stones and who's building with wood, hay, and stubble, but it'll be evident that day because God's going to put all of our works through the fire. And he goes on, if any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. So when it goes to the fire, if it comes out the other side, you get a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. That is, you don't get the reward. But he himself will be saved, yet so 
as through fire. So this is not talking about salvation now. He's talking about rewards that for people who have already proven themselves to be believers. And get this, there's going to be believers who are going to have their works go through the fire and they're going to all be burned up and they'll get no reward that they could have gotten otherwise had they built with a different material. So we can begin to conjecture what kind of things are works that build with you know, gold and silver and precious stones and what are the kind of things that sometimes people do that are works that'll just be categorized as wood, hay, and stubble? Well, I think the biggest uh, determining factor will be did what we do was according to the will of God. And so we ought to line up to what God tells us to do in his word. And there's so much that's done under the banner of Christianity these days that it might be good, but it's not something you can find an example of in the scripture. A lot of things. And there's a lot of preachers today who I don't think that they're unsaved, but yet if you, maybe they are, you know, but if you listen to their sermons, they're, they're not teaching what the Bible teaches. They're teaching something other than what the Bible teaches. Well, if those guys are actually saved, when they stand in front of Jesus and those sermons go through the fire, those unbiblical sermons are all going to be burnt up like any unbiblical works. And, of course, our motives come into play here, too, because Jesus warned about doing things to be seen by others. You know, you get your reward in full, so I suppose there'll be some of us who are presenting works. We'll put them on that conveyor belt, and they'll go into the fire, and out they'll come the other side, all burn up, because even though they were good works, they weren't done with the right motives. They were done to build our own kingdom or let you know people see how great we were or something. Okay, so this is sobering stuff. Oh, my goodness. And be good to pray. Uh, Lord, can you help me get ready for this judgment? I don't want to have anything burn up. So if there's going to be anything burn up in the future, I'd like to know right now so I can avoid that. <laughs> and God loves us. He'll reveal to us if there's stuff we're doing right now that's ultimately going to be burned up one day. Why wait? You know, what an embarrassment it's going to be then. Better to get it over with now. Get that embarrassment over with right now. Then you can confess it and get on track with the Lord. Okay, this is a much bigger subject than I have time for in this little lesson, but uh, it's worth spending time with. Okay, thanks for joining me.